A very good evening to everyone present here tonight. My name is Brian and I'll be your host for tonight. On behalf of the JPO family, we'd like to extend a warm welcome to everyone tuning in for tonight's broadcast. We hope that everyone is doing well and staying safe indoors. A friendly reminder to maintain good hygiene at all times and maintain social distancing when heading out. To anyone who is interested in sharing tonight's broadcast, a live feed is being shared on the JPO YouTube channel. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask, Please feel free to type them out in the Q&A section down below. For those of you joining us from YouTube, please type your questions down in the live chat down below. A recording of the webinar will also be uploaded onto the YouTube channel. Today's seminar features Mr. Felix Kleeser, 
with his topic being the challenges of life in the pursuit of music. Mr. Felix Kleeser is an exceptional artist in several aspects. At the age of three, he expressed the wish to play the horn, which he made a reality by age four, when he began his first lessons. At the age of 17, he then enrolled in Professor Marcus Masconiti's class at the Hanover University of Music and Arts. In 2013, he presented his debut album, Reveries, which was released by Berlin Classics. The recording demonstrates Felix Kleeser's incredible musicality, as well as his brilliant technique and command of his instrument. The CD was met with rave reviews, among others from Frankfurter Al, uh, sorry, the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, which is a well-established newspaper in Germany. He also appears together with Christian Karg uh, Christian and Malcolm Martineau on the album Heimlich auf der Rome, presented by Berlin Classics in 2014. In the same year, he also received the Echo Classic, which is Germany's major classical music awards for the Young Artist of the Year. Additionally, a book of his fascinating life was published soon after. In 2016, Felix Kleeser received the prestigious Leonard Bernstein Award of the Schleswig Holstein Music Festival. He also, uh, sorry, he also has a special desire, which is to evoke a variety of colors and, music and beautiful tones to the sound of his instrument. Quite recently, he, he received an excellent review from the Suddeutsche Zeitung, which described his performance as simply perfect, with precision and a range of instrument expression and beauty of sound. In April 2015, his new CD with the Württembergische Kammerorchester Heilbronn and Rubin Gazarian was released by Berlin Classics, featuring Mr. Kleeser playing his horn, concerts from Michael and Joseph Haydn, as well as Mozart. With this CD, he, he demonstrates the rare ability to play deep and high horn pieces. From 2008 until 2011, Felix Kleeser was a member of the National Youth Orchestra of Germany, where he frequently performed at major venues such as the Berlin Philharmonie, Beethoven, uh, Beethoven Hall Bronn, the Cohn Philharmonie, and Philharmonie am Gasteig München. He also, he also participated in numerous productions by the Westdeutsche Rundfunk and has undertaken tours to Austria, Italy, Switzerland, and South Africa, among others. As our JPO family attendees are mostly students ranging from primary school to college, their parents and their teachers, the sharing of knowledge and advice here for all of us tonight is invaluable and greatly appreciated. The JPO is very honored to have Felix joining in as our guest for today. I hope you all join me in giving him a warm welcome. Without further ado, once again, a very good evening or rather a very good afternoon to Mr. Felix Kleeser. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, Felix. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> well, thank, once again, thanks for joining us today, Felix. Of course, it's a pleasure. <laughs> that was definitely a very interesting. Uh, uh, that was definitely a very interesting profile there. I hope I didn't butcher some of the words there. Um, no, I was still fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear. Um, so let's see. So let's start today. Uh, let's start tonight's interview with um, with the video that was shown earlier on. So, what would you like to tell us about the video, uh, the two separate videos that we were watching earlier on? Oh, well, I, I don't want to tell you something big about it. Was both uh, were Mozart horn concertos. Uh, the first video you saw was the first Mozart horn concerto, and the second video you saw uh, was uh, uh, the fourth uh, Mozart horn concerto. Um, yes, I, I made it two years ago. I recorded all four Mozart horn concertos with the Camerata Salzburg in Salzburg. Um, and so we made a few videos and you saw uh, some, some a small, small a snippet from that. Um, so this was a very nice time because, you know, uh, I was always directly in the area where Mozart lived. So when I walked in the morning from the hotel to the recording room, which was a Mozarteum, uh, I walked um, uh, by uh, Mozart's uh, living house, so where he grew up and where he was born, and so on. Of course, there's a very nice atmosphere when you when you're in the same area like the composer was uh, at his time, and when you have the chance to 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 record his music there. So it was a, was a very nice time. And uh, the second video was was a was a live stream concert. So I made 
a few videos, and a few live stream uh, recording uh, the season because here in Germany everything is is forbidden and in Europe uh, also. So uh, it was not possible to play any concerts and uh, also to travel was not allowed because of the quarantine time. Uh, it was not possible to, to leave Europe and so everything was a little bit difficult. So um, I played a, a few stream concerts and uh, you saw uh, one of the, uh, the, the second video you saw was uh, one uh, of the stream concerts. Hmm. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, it definitely must be a very interesting experience to be able to play uh, like close by to where the composer actually lived. Then, yeah. So, hmm. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, so regarding the two different performances, uh, regarding the two different videos, I assume those were two different orchestras, or were those the same, or were those the same orchestra that you performed with? No, no, no. They are different orchestras. The first one was was the Kamerata Salzburg, the Austrian one. And the second one was the uh, Wittenbergische Philharmonie uh, Reutlingen, so that was a was a German one. So there were two different orchestras. All right. Well, thanks for sharing all that with us. So um, aside from that, so it says here in your profile that you expressed the interest to play uh, for the horn uh, at the age of three, and then you began your first lessons at age four. So would you like to elaborate a little bit on how you actually started off playing the French horn? Oh, well, this is a fantastic question because I don't know really the answer. <laughs> that's, that's a funny thing. The thing is, I was, was three and I grew up in a small city uh, called Göttingen. It's, it's a very small city in the middle of Germany. And uh, I had the wish to, to play the French horn. And I went to my parents and said, well, I want to play the French horn. But my parents are not a musician. They are not playing an instrument. They are not, well, um, they don't know. They even didn't know really what a French horn exactly is or how it uh, looked like or something like this. So uh, they went to the music school. And so in getting there was just one music school. And I went there and said, well, we have a son and he wants to play a French horn. Uh, so is it possible? And uh, so there was just one teacher for French horn. <laughs> and so I, I met him. And then the beginning, they said, well, it's a little bit too, uh, that I'm a little bit too young for following the French horn at that age because uh, you need uh, much muscles and energy and a lot of air to play that instrument. Um, and so they said, maybe it would be nice to start with another instrument, with an with a easier instrument where you don't need that much energy from your body. And so um, that's the idea that I started with a xylophone or something like this. But my idea was not to make music, so I just want to play the French horn, so nothing else. So, um, yeah. And then they said, okay, it's okay, uh, maybe a little bit too young, but uh, we'll try. And then uh, I think a few weeks after my fourth birthday, I started to, to have the first lesson with the French horn. All right, so, um, so exactly, so when did you know that this was the instrument that you wanted to play for like pretty much the rest of your life, pretty much? <laughs> For the rest of my life. Oh, I don't know whether this is, this is a thing I want to do the rest of my life because there's so many interesting things in the life uh, that uh, I think it's, it's boring to do just one thing in your life. Uh, well, you know, I had never the plan to make it a professional or to make it as a job, you know. I just learned the French horn and then I was, you know, I was eight or nine years old and then my, my uh, teacher at that time gave me a recording of uh, all four Mozart horn concertos with, um, with Hermann Baumann and I put it in the CD player and I was really, you know, I was really stunning because I never heard French horn together, together with other instruments. And of course, I never heard a French horn together with the orchestra and was really stunning. Wow, that's possible. And the instrument, uh, the French horn sounds completely different than the thing I was doing. So I was really, really, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I was really happy to, to see that. And then, then I said, yeah, okay, I want to sound exactly like Mr. Bauman sounds. <laughs> so that was, that was the idea. And so I, I practiced a lot and I made a lot and, and, and I borrowed many, many pieces, uh, the notes of the pieces. And I, I practiced for myself. And I went to my teacher and said, wow, I want to play this piece. And I want to play that concerto. And my, my, my teacher always said, no, you're too young for this or for that. You have to play other things before. Um, so uh, I learned it for myself. So many concerts, um, I'm playing now, I learned in the beginning for myself. Um, yeah. but, but not with the idea to, um, to, to make it as a job or to study it or to, to uh, be a part of a good orchestra or to be a soloist. It was never my dream. I just had the dream to 
play this instrument as good as possible. That was the only thing I wanted to do. Um, and so, uh, I, I, yes, I practiced a lot when I was younger. I, I was not so interested in making school things, not so interesting in mathematics or other things. So I just uh, practiced my instrument. Um, and so that, that was the beginning. And then I had the wish to, to study the French horn or to make it professional. Uh, this idea came really late um, because, yeah, I think it was in the, in the end time of my school uh, school period when I uh, when everyone uh, should um, yes think about what he or she wants to make in the future. And uh, at that time, I had the idea: okay, maybe I can study study music. And then, uh, yeah, I tried to make the auditions for for the university, and uh, so then I started to play. Uh, to 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 study the French on. Okay, well, thanks for thanks for sharing all that with us. It definitely sounded like a, it definitely sounded like there were a lot of things that uh, came into that came into being. Why you decided to uh, pursue this? So, um, oh, sorry, I did have something in my mind uh, that I wanted to bring up earlier on, but I seem to have forgotten about it. Uh, what was it? Sorry. Uh, so let's see. So I so uh, regarding the so. It's definitely very, oh yeah, this was what I wanted to mention. So it was, it's definitely very honorable that this was your aspiration. Like instead of playing for it, playing for like, playing for it, playing it as a job, you wanted to play it as best as you can. So yeah, that's a, that's a very different, uh, that's definitely a very honorable thing that Felix, um, thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah, because you know, that's the most important thing. You can't say, I want to play in that orchestra. I want to win that competition. I want to be a soloist. You will never be a soloist. You will never win a competition. The one and only thing you can do is to say, I want to be as good as possible. And the results of what you're doing, you can't really manage, you know? You can't, even if you are a, you are a swimmer or something like this, and you're going to the Olympic Games, and you say, well, I want to win the gold medal. Okay. You can say, I want to win the gold medal, but that's not, not really possible to do this because you can train as much as you can you can prepare as good as you can these are the things you can do but you can't uh, you can't um, manage other people for example you know you can't say because I'm doing my best but maybe in the words there's someone who's even better than me then okay he or she is better than me um, you, you can't manage yourself and so for me that's the most important thing when you want to make music then just look on your music just look on your instrument just look on what you want to do because that's the one and only thing you have a control over it you can say you can look how good you can practice how good you can prayer prepare you can see uh what you need for yourself to 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 um to play peace for example you know you have a piece you want to play and then you have the feeling well i'm i'm not good enough for this piece so what can i do these are the things you can you can work on but um so that's for me the most important thing when you want to be a musician then just try to play as good as possible the rest uh, comes by itself yeah okay i can definitely agree with that it definitely brings to mind like a quote from a movie i uh, watched uh, last time uh, what was it uh, put, uh pursue excellence and and success will follow so yeah okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay all right so i'm um, so moving uh, moving back to uh your career as a um uh, playing the French horn. So, why did you select the French horn? So, were there no other instruments that pick, that uh, that attracted your interest? Well, as I told you, my, my idea was not to make music. Or oh, there was no one who said, "Well, this uh, kid should uh, learn an instrument." So, it was not not the idea. My family says no musician. No one is playing an instrument. No one. Even even for, for Christmas time or something like this is playing a short song on the piano or something like that. no one. So that was not the idea. The idea was I want to play the French horn. But the thing is, I can't remember where I've seen the, the instrument the very first time. So I was never in a concert where I can remember where I've seen the instrument. I, I never saw a movie or something like this where uh, where I saw this instrument. So that's a that's a little bit uh, mysterium that uh, that I don't know where I've seen the instrument the very first time so but but I can remember that I wanted to play exactly that instrument <laughs> probably the first time you looked at it and then you just you're just so captivated by it then <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> all right so um so before before you moved on to uh sorry before you moved on to pursue move uh music did you already uh perform in uh solo do you already do uh solo performances and such 
What, what do you mean in such? Oh, sorry. Um, before, uh, sorry, uh, let me just quickly, just let me collect my thoughts a bit. Sorry. Uh, so before you actually, dis- uh, to f- before you decided to fully pursue music, did you have some experience in terms of solo performances uh, before then? Before my solo career? Yeah. Oh, so, well, yeah, solo. <laughs> well, yes, of course. You're playing somewhere. And, uh, uh, when you start in the music, you play a concert and uh, in front of the audience. Um, but, you know, being a soloist is something you can't learn to be a soloist. And you can't say, I want to be a soloist. Maybe you become a soloist or maybe you don't become a soloist. Uh, that's something you can't really um, you can't really work on because um, there are so many things important to be a soloist because it, it's not just to make music the most important thing. The most important thing is when you're a soloist, then you are the star on stage. So everyone looked on you. Everyone is interested in you. So when you go on stage, you have to say something. You have something where you say, well, I want to... Um, share this with with the audience you know that's this very very important um you have to have an idea of what do you think about life what do you think about other people what do you think about um different problems you know and and and, 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 and yeah in every types you know um i'm not making music i'm i'm, I'm telling stories i'm uh, telling people something um, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about emotions, all these things with my instrument, of course, but that's the most important thing. You know, it's not something, I think a lot of young people are thinking when they want to become a soloist and they have to play technical really perfect and they have uh, the perfect control over uh, their instrument. And that's very important. That's, that's unimportant. I think everyone could, could learn an instrument. Everyone could, could learn technical things. That's, that's not difficult. You know, uh, everyone who, um, as much energy and uh, a strong will, everyone who has this uh, could learn this. That's another big problem. The most important thing is that you that you have a personality, that you know what you want to tell, that you have um, um, yes, yeah, that that you have something you want to say. You know, that that's the most most important thing, and uh, that's something you can't really learn. You have it or you don't have it. That's, that's, that's the most important thing. And uh, so um, being a solo is something you have to learn, of course, um, but it's also a part you can't really, really practice or you can't really learn in that case. Hmm. All right. Well, thanks for sharing those thoughts with us, Felix. It's definitely something something to go on. Um, so, um, so moving back to your, uh, moving back to the horn. So were you more interested in the, like how the instrument itself worked or were you more interested in the sounds that it makes and such? Well, for me, for me, the most beautiful thing in the French horn is, is color. You know, when you, when you watch movies, you can, many, many times you can, can hear that the, the French horn is playing in the background. So um, it's, in the full music of the French horn is used very, very much because you can, with, with one note, you can, can tell so many things. You can play piano like uh, you are you are sad or you are a mystery or you are afraid of something. Everything could be speak by, 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 a, by a very quiet note. But just the color of the note makes the atmosphere, makes the emotions. And... Um, so that's, that's for me the most uh, beautiful thing in playing French horn, to work with, with the colors, to work uh, with emotions, just with, with one note. It's, it's, it's not a virtuous instrument. It's not like a piano, you know, you can play a piano really quick or a violin really quick and everyone's is sitting standing in front of you and say, wow, that's magic, that's so quick. And how is he or she, how, is, how are they doing that? Because it's not possible, that's too quick. That's, not, of course, you can do this also with the French horn, but that's not the most interesting thing about the French horn for me. For me, the most uh, interesting thing is to work with, with different colors and with the most, uh, with the different emotions of, of those instruments. Hmm. Right, definitely. Yeah, I can, I think it, de- yeah, I think it definitely shows that you definitely took a lot, uh, you put in a lot of effort to actually being able to properly produce the sounds that you make, all the emotions and the tones that you were uh, mentioning. So, yeah. Thanks for, thanks, for, thanks for bringing that up. So as you, um, so how about as you grew older though, uh, because we did mention, we did go into a bit of how you started off, 
Uh, how about when, as you grew older, how uh, were there any difficulties in uh, maintaining an instrument and such? Of course, you know, when you learn an instrument, then you're full of difficulties. You're full of problems. Everything is difficult. Everything is a problem. It's normal for everyone. But the thing is not how many problems you have. You, the, the, the thing is, the most important thing is that you solve that problems, that you overcome them. Because every person, every person in the world, in every situation, in the beginning, they have problems. When you learn something new, then you're not good. You have to learn it. When you're going, going on in your learning process, you have many, many problems. You have many, many situations where you think, well, okay, uh, that's maybe too difficult for me, or I can't, can't overcome the problems, or I can't overcome uh, the situation because I, I'm, I think I have a limit there. Uh, but mostly that is not true. So you have to be relaxed. You have to work on yourself um, with, of course, with, with much energy, but also with, with uh, the way of thinking that something takes, takes time. You can't learn everything in one day or in two days. Something, sometimes something takes a year to overcome it, even if it's a small problem. And even if someone else uh, beside you is, has not the same problems and uh, is going over the problems very easy. But that's not important. You know, everyone could learn everything. That's possible, of course. But uh, when, you, when you are coming to a point where you think, well, there's a limit and, and I have a problem there. I can't um, overcome these problems. Then you have, a, then you have two, two possibilities. You can say, okay, I will try my best to overcome the problem. Or I say, well, it's too difficult for me. I stop here. So, but when you stop, then you will never overcome problems. Never, never, never in your life. And um, people who are successful in music, in sport, in economics, in it doesn't matter. It's not just in music. They are just good in overcoming problems because they have a problem and they want to solve the problem. That's the only thing you have to learn. And when you know this, and, and when you know that, that every person has their own problems, and they could be very different, but they have them, um, then you have another attitude to what you are doing, because then you know, okay, I have a problem, but that's not, not something uh, horrible. I will work on my problem, and I will, um, yes, um, optimize myself. I don't know how to explain, but um, when I take my time, and when I put much energy in it, then there will be a chance to overcome every problems, and that's for me. That's for me very, very important because I, I'm also teaching at university. I have my own class, and you know, um, every student they are they are young. They in the beginning of the bachelor studium, for example, they are leaving school, and then they start to to learn uh, the instrument as a bachelor studium, and then they have to change between before they study music, it's a hobby. And when they study music, then it's a job. And so when you do it as a job, you're getting many, many problems suddenly. And then everyone and every student has his own problems. So one has problems with embrasure, the other has problems with the sound, the third problem with rhythmical things. So everyone is different and everyone has his own problems. But uh, the most important thing is that they take their time and say, okay, I can overcome them. And then they, yes, they have many possibilities. Well, that's, a, <clears throat> that's definitely a very inspiring mindset there. So yeah, thanks for sharing that. Uh, thanks for sharing that with us, Felix. Uh, so, what, so aside from that, so what drove you to accomplish so much? What, 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 gave you the, what gave you the passion to overcome, as you mentioned, all these problems as a musician, which in turn, uh, and in your efforts to facilitate music making opportunities? Since you being now, uh, you being a, uh, you being an instructor at a university, as you mentioned as well. Very easy. I just want to play the instrument as good as possible, because you know that was the only thing. I I heard uh, Mr. Balmont playing the, the Mozart concertos, and from that time I had the idea I want to be able to do exactly that. So that was the one and only thing. So. Um, that what fascinates me and, and I always listen to, to other home players and how good they are playing and there are so many fantastic home players and um, I had just a wish I want to do the same. It's like when you when you are a small kid and you see in a, in a through a window in a store a very big Lego uh, truck 
you know, and you say, well, I want to have that truck. I want to have that truck. I want to have that truck. Then you're really fascinating about what you want to have. And then you think about, okay, how can I, can I get it? You can, you can go to my parents and ask them, maybe you can buy me that truck or you can, can look to, to earn some money or something like this. Then you are fascinating about something. And that was the one and only thing I wanted to, to, uh, to learn and one, why I, I put so much energy in this, uh, in, uh, in this instrument. Even if I didn't have the chance to, to study music or to be a soloist, uh, I, I would be also fascinating about uh, to be able, able to do this or that. And that was what they wanted to only saying. And so for me, it was a very emotional um, situation when I had, uh, you know, I was nine. And when I recorded the music concertos, I was uh, 20, 26. So uh, 70 years later, I had the chance to make also my own recording with a very good orchestra um, of this concerto. So this was for me a very emotional uh, situation because I had, I had the, the fascinating at the age of nine and um, the fascinating, I want to do the same. And uh, 70 years later, I had the chance to do exactly the same thing. And so for me, this recording is, is the most uh, yes, touchable and emotional recording I've ever made in my life. All right, well, it's definitely glad to hear that you managed to achieve that. So uh, congrats, Felix. Uh, so, uh, aside, so I assume that this um, this uh, recording with the with the orchestra happened to be your greatest achievement in the music industry, in your opinion. Or did you do you have any other mo uh, moments that you like to that you like to look back on? Well, this is a very difficult question because for me, the most beautiful thing in making music is to play a concert in front of an audience and to see that the audience is happy, because that's the reason why we make music. We make music to make people happy. To give them a good time and to make them or to give them the possibility to enjoy something you know when they go to this concert it's about uh, one and a half or two hours at night or in the morning or it doesn't matter when the concert is then i want to give them a very beautiful time that they relax that they feel comfortable and that they're happy and um so that's for me the most important thing in playing concert it's not so important which concert hall you play or which orchestra, you know, of course, it's good to play when you play with a really good orchestra, then, then it's really nice because you can have many possibilities, musical possibilities and so on. That's also very nice. But the most important thing for me is to make people happy. And for that, it doesn't matter where they are come from, where I am, where I'm playing, how the acoustic is in the hall, how the hall is, it is beautiful there. Uh, is my hotel room fantastic? Uh, uh, did I have a, a business class or first class flight before or just economy fl flights before? That's all, that's not important for me in, in making a solo career. The most important thing is just to, to make uh, people happy. And when I have the feeling that people are happy and then they are smiling, then, then I'm happy too. And that's the most beautiful thing uh, and the most, yeah, beautiful experience I had and I have in my, in my musical life. That's, that's definitely a very uh, inspirational there, Felix. All right, so um, we did have a we did have a picture earlier on. Uh, is it all right if we if I asked you a little bit about it? Oh yeah, I think yeah, it's getting it's going up now. Um, oh yeah, can you uh, elaborate a little bit about this picture? So who, um, so what is this particular ensemble that you're playing with? <laughs> well, it was my it was also a recording of mine. We, we made it. It's uh, with Herbert Chuk on the piano and then the Bielov uh, on the violin. Uh, we made a recording with, with the Brahms Trio and we recorded the album with uh, the Brahms Trio at, at, uh, yeah, at the head of the project. And we looked for, for uh, different pieces and compositions uh, for this ensemble. So it's very interesting because um, there's a very big trio by Johannes Brahms for this ensemble, for violin, horn and piano. Very, very beautiful and very popular. But that's maybe the one and only big uh, composition for this uh, combination of instruments. So uh, we looked for, yes, small other pieces, and there are other pieces for this uh, combination of instruments, but uh, not by that big composers or not that big pieces. They are maybe just five minutes or 10 minutes long. So uh, that was a project uh, we made. And uh, of course, we are still playing many, many concerts. Uh, hopefully, when, when Corona is over, then we have <laughs> even more concerts with this program. But uh, yes, and uh, this picture was made uh, for, the, for, for the shooting for that album.
Hmm. All right. Well, um, that, thanks for sharing that with us, Felix. Um, so, um, as you mentioned earlier on, that you, uh, you're hoping that you'll be able to play more performances after uh, once Corona has blown over and such. So, um, what have so what have you been up to uh, regarding uh, during the, during these times? Because, as you mentioned, it def uh, and I can definitely agree with that. Uh, agree with you there. It's definitely it's definitely a very uh, good treat to be able to bring smiles and bring smiles and music to uh, to uh, the audience and start doing your performances. So, what uh, so have you been uh, able to do any of that during this time? Well, you know, I, I made a few stream concerts, but you know, for me, stream concert is not the same because you're playing for microphone or for camera, and uh, it, it's not, you know, the, the personal connection between the people is for me the most important thing, you know, that I, that I have the feeling or, you know, um, the most concerts I play after the concert are signing hour so the people can come buy a CD and I will sign everything and they're making pictures and so on. So it's for me very, very important because I want to be connected to the people. Uh, and so the streaming concert is not the same. So I made many, many things uh, without the instruments. So I, I uh, made a lot of cooking. Then I bought a PlayStation, PlayStation Five, and played okay. a lot of PlayStation. So <laughs> and so I, I made many, many, many things besides making music. And for me, uh, the first time was was a bit night because of the the weeks before everything started to, to, to not to be allowed anymore. The weeks before I had many concerts with many different programs, with many flights. So I played a concert, went to the airport, flew somewhere else, played the next concert and so on. So it was really stressful and I didn't have, didn't have that much time to prepare everything. So um, when I got the information that um, everything is, is, is locked and, and uh, so every concert the next weeks are canceled, then I put my instruments away for I think two weeks, two months or three months, something like this. And I did many, many other things. Uh, uh, I watched a lot of, of, of videos of, of, of cooking, for example. And then I watched in the, in the midnight somewhere at, at, at 1 a.m. or something like this. I watched a video of, of how you can make something. And then I went to the kitchen and uh, tried to, to recook something. And so, and so it was, it was also very, uh, very nice to have the possibility to, to do other things besides music because um, mm -hmm. yeah for me it, it's a, as I told you um, we are telling stories so when you're just interested in your instrument then you're not a musician the most important thing is that you're interested in life that you're interested in other people that you are interested in everything uh, which which you can do uh, in the world because when you when you're interested in everything and when you're made many experience with, with different things and you have something uh, you can tell other people you can connect with other people and uh, so that was a very very um, very nice time so but but i hope hopefully in, in june i have the possibility to make a few concerts play again so first june it's uh, my, my my next planned concert in the berlin philharmonie with uh, with Mozart one concertos and then I play with the Kamerata Salzburg in Austria and with Festival Strings Luzern in Germany and then I fly to to Mexico for a few concerts. They're not cancelled right now. I don't know whether they will be all allowed, but uh, hopefully the one one two three concert of them will be allowed in June and then in July we will see what what will be in July. All right. Well, fingers crossed that everything goes well then. Yeah. So, all right. So, I think we have time for one last question before we move on to the Q and A section from our audience. So, okay. this this question comes from the JPO itself, um, or Justin Philharmonic Orchestra. So, as you may have heard, the Justin Philharmonic Orchestra has involved itself in a variety of activities. So, on behalf of the JPO, uh, I would like to ask about your views on the JPO, and if you have any other suggestions for the JPO, so that its members may further improve itself. Well, I think it's a very good project because, you know, the most important thing is that you, that you give people the possibility, on the one hand, to make music, on the other hand, to, to, to have a chance to be in a group, to be together with other people. Um, because for me, making music, the most important thing is in making music is you can connect with everyone really easy. Even if you're not speaking the same language, if you are from different cultures, if you are uh, have different, different uh, opinions in 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 different things you can make music together and with making music you have a well connection between um 
different people. And so that's that's a big thing about about music to uh, to connect people from different um, cultures, from from different groups together, and and to show them, okay, we are all we are all equal. We are all the same. We are all persons. We are all human beings, and we all um, have emotions. We all want to yes enjoy the life, and um, so. That's a, that's a good thing about it, and, 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 and that, as I read, um, you, you're making different projects. You have different orchestras. You're making chamber music. You um, you have uh, kids from from many many different um, yeah um, areas, groups, and so on, and connect them together. And I think that's a that's a very good, uh, very beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks for saying. Uh, thanks for saying that. I'm very sure our uh, members are definitely very happy to hear say all this. So once again, thanks, Felix, for answering uh, for answering those questions. Uh, so I think we will be moving on to our Q and A section. So we do have a few questions coming in from the audience. So we do have one of our audience members saying, um, "Hello, um, Mr. Cleeter. Thanks, uh, uh, thanks for sharing all this with us. Um, do you happen to, uh, aside from playing the French horn, did you happen to have any other uh, like big uh, big aspirations?" Oh well, I have many, 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 many um, interested things. So um, you know, one thing I'm, I'm interested more and more is um, the way I want to understand how, why people are doing something. Like you know, some kind of, of inspirations. Why are some people are able to go their way, and why have people problems sometimes? You know, when you say, for example. Um, everyone is saying when someone is good in something, then he or she has a big talent, but I don't have a big talent, so I can't do this. Because, but he or she is very good because she has, has a very big t- talent in playing the piano and playing football. In, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I have a different opportunity. I think it's not important how much talent you have. It's important how much you will something. And um, are you okay with taking much energy in something that's for me the most important thing and when you when you think more in this way not not in in, he has more talent and he has less talent and he's a you know and i have i have no talent sometimes when you when you're thinking not in this categories then suddenly you have many many possibilities because then it's not important how much talent you have or how much gift you have from, from God or something like this, it's important what you're doing, you know? And this is a kind of a motivation because when you when you look to, to successful people, um, they are also able, even if they are older, they are learning something completely new. Even if they are doing something for 30 years, then they start something completely new um, and they, they are able to learn something uh, from the from the very first step. And that's possible. And these are all things I'm, 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 I'm thinking a lot about this. And um, um, I also want to show people that that, 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 that they have maybe more possibilities than they think in the first way, you know, that there are more things they can do. And um, that the most important thing is to trust in themselves when they trust in themselves and when they say, okay, I want to do this and that, and, and I'm able to do this. And they are, Yes, feeling good with with taking energy and 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 in what they want, then they have they have many many possibilities. And this way of thinking fascinates me a lot because uh, with this way of thinking, you have the possibility to to make things uh, which are not visible when you are thinking. It's just about having talent or to have a chance or something something like this. Hmm. Okay. Well. Well, let me know if you do make some headwinds that because it definitely sounds like something that will be uh, it definitely sounds like something that would be very interesting to go into <laughs> all right so um we do have another question coming in from another audience member so this person is saying hi felix were there times in your music learning journey that you felt quite down because of your physical disability would you like to share your thoughts inspiration and advice especially to people with disabilities well I think the most important thing is in disabilities is there are two kinds of possibilities. There are disabilities you can see and there are disabilities you can't see. You know, when you have no arms or no legs or you're sitting in a 
in a um, wheelchair or something like this, then you can see a disability. But when you have a disability that you um, have everything, you, you can eat every, um, that you're completely fit, that you are really, everything is fine. But um, the way you think is limiting yourself. When you say something like, as I told you before, um, uh, I want to do, I want to learn an instrument, but, but I have no talent for this. And I can't really, I'm, I'm not a musical person and I can't do this and so on. Then you have also a disability, but you can't see the disability. And, but the category is the same. So for me, it's, it's not important because I can do everything I want to do. I can play the instrument and the things I learned on the instrument were the same like everyone else learned, has to learn. Um, so this was not the this is not the, the most important thing. The most important thing is what you're thinking about yourself and what is in your head. And when you're limiting yourself in your head, then you have a disability. Yes? And it doesn't matter whether you can see it or whether you can't see it. When you say to yourself, no, I'm not good, I guess, or maybe you have a problem in something, you want to learn something, and then you have a problem, and you, you, you have to feel, oh, okay, I have a problem, it's too difficult, and I don't want to go on this way because it's too much work, to, and it's too difficult for me, and so on, and um, I will stop here and do something else. Then you also have a disability, you know? And that's, that's for me, a very very important thing and this is something which belongs every one of us because we are all human beings we all have problems we all have things in which we are good and in which we are not that good um that's completely normal and so um the most problem i had were just with, with myself and with with my way of thinking and and so on so this was the so yeah biggest problem to overcome all right, well, thanks for the advice. I think the audience member even left a message saying very true. So yeah, I'm very sure they're definitely very satisfied with your response there, Felix. So we uh, moving on, we do have another audience member saying, oh, I think I think this question may have been answered earlier on. So thank you for your sharing, Mr. Kleeser. May I know what is your next big project? I'm pretty sure you've addressed that. And what were you doing during the pandemic that you didn't do before? So I think did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as I told you, I told you a little bit about things I did in the pandemic. Uh, a big project, well, I, I have many, many projects, but, but you know, I'm not thinking that much in, in big projects, you know. Um, so with the, the last recording I made, I, I recorded a, a, an album with the name uh, Beyond Words. So I recorded uh, many, many arias and, and choir songs in a version for horn and orchestra. So it was a really nice experience because um, no one else before played these pieces uh, on a French horn. So it was like a Lasha Kyopianga, Ombra My Few, um, Hallelujah, and so on. So uh, many, many songs which were never played on a French horn before. And I recorded this with the, with the orchestra and I also had the idea to, uh, there was plan to, to play a tour with the orchestra and this, this pieces. Uh, yes, was was not possible because of the, of the corona situation but so i'm looking much forward um to come back to normal life and to have normal possibilities to go in a store to go in a restaurant to go in a cinema and this is things I'm, I'm looking much forward to right now and so all the other things we will see which things are possible and which are not and we'll definitely have to wait and see how everything turns out i suppose so regarding oh yeah so the person did add on a bit to this so regarding the regarding the arrangements that you were talk, uh, that you were mentioning earlier on so are these uh, specific are these specially arranged to be uh, for the horn and the orchestra which was a, which arrangement oh so uh, because you um, if I'm not mistaken earlier on you mentioned that you've arranged like certain songs like hallelujah and such for the horn uh, like you plan to do recordings and such. So uh, have these been arranged for both the horn and the orchestra? Yeah, yeah. this is. I, I have someone who is very, very good in arranging music. So I, I, I went to him, and we worked close, close together because I had the idea. Um, the problem is when you when you play a song on a French horn, you don't have the text. And my idea was that okay, I don't have a text, and so I have the possibility to just look. To just look on the music so maybe you can hallelujah hallelujah maybe you know this uh, uh, normally you have a text and you have a meaning of the text and when you don't have the meaning of the text you can look on the music and say okay 
when we don't have the text, maybe there are possibilities to interpret the music in a different way. So with other words, maybe there are other things in that music besides the things you can see with the text. Um, so this was, that was my, my idea to just look on the music besides the text. And maybe you can play a song in which um, the text is about love. You can, you can play the music uh, with a song about, uh, about uh, uh, sadness or something, something like that. When you have a text, then you can't, can't interpret the music in a different way like the text is. But when you just have a horn, then you can interpret it in a different way. So I went to the to uh, Wolfgang Gens, as the name of the person who arranged everything. I went to him and said, well, I have this and that idea, and maybe you can arrange this. And then we tried uh, different um, keys, for example. We um, So we looked uh, which uh, register is very good for this or that piece and how the color, maybe you play something in D major, then the color is completely different uh, on the French or like in C major. So um, I tried different keys to, to look uh, which, um, yeah, which range is good for 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 the for the for the color I want to use? So this is a very very yeah uh, very tricky uh, thing to 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 look you know something when you play something in C major on a French horn then the color is a little bit more more silver when you play something in D major on a French horn then the color is more dark and more deep and so you have a different meaning when you have different colors you have a different meaning so um, this was a yeah, this was a project I, I worked uh, um, yes, real close on and I put a lot of energy in it. And uh, so this was a, was a last big project I made. Mm. Okay, well, it definitely sounds like uh, it definitely sounds like a lot of thought and detail had to be put into this. So yeah, definitely yeah. looking to hear, definitely looking forward to actually hearing all the uh, all these projects from you. <laughs> Thanks yes. again. Uh, so we do have one more question coming from, oh, so this is coming from, I think, one of our previous guests, uh, Mr. Yao uh, Yenze. So this, uh, so this person is saying, um, hey, Felix, great sharing. Can you tell us more about storytelling? How do you come up with all these musical ideas? And where does the inspiration come from? And how do you develop, uh, how do you develop that? It's very easy. Inspiration is what inspires you. When you eat something, which tastes really delicious. And then you go away and then you play a piece and then you have the feeling, oh, I, I, I don't know why, but, but I have the feeling I, I remember that delicious food I, I eat two weeks ago. And you have a kind of inspiration. You know, it's, it's, it's not important that you, that, you, that you sit down and say, okay, I have to uh, look for some inspirations. That's not good. When you make music or when you listen to music and when you are, making yourself completely free of everything, not something intellectual, not something you've learned about the time, about a composer, about how you have to play something. When you make yourself completely free and you listen to music, then sometimes you have a, have a directly association about something. So you're, you're listening to a song and say, well, every time when I listen to this, that song or when I hear, hear that song, and I remember the last time when I've eaten ice cream. I don't know why, but but this is my this is my um, this is my inspiration. So then you can you have a feeling of of you have a connection between making uh, music or hearing music and um, some some experience you made before. And then you can you can play the music like your feeling is. You know what I mean. So it's it's not that important that you that you have. Um, that you read many, many books about music, that you learn about historical things. Of course, it's important. You know, you have to play a Baroque piece. It's, it's a different character, like a, a classical piece, and classical is different, like a, like a romantic piece, and so on and so on. Of course, that's very important. But, but the most important thing is that you look deep inside you and look what feelings do you have when you play music and when you listen to music. So it's a normal human's reaction you have when you listen to, to music. And that's for me the most inspiring inspiring and, and most important thing. Hmm. All right, definitely, I definitely can agree with all that, uh, Felix. So once again, thanks for sharing all that at first. And thank you so much for all the responses. All right, everyone, uh, I think we are coming to the end of tonight's broadcast. So we'd just like to remind everyone that our JPO Family Program will be broadcasted twice a week until further notice. 
So that's every Sunday and Wednesday night in Malaysia time. So join us next time with our next guest who will be revealed at a later date. More details on this can be found on our Facebook page. A video recording of tonight's broadcast will also be available on the YouTube channel along with the past webinars and the soon to be broadcasted interviews. So feel free to share the Zoom webinar registration link, the JPO YouTube channel, or even the JPO Facebook page with your friends and family. For our YouTube audience, if you are enjoying our program, please show your support to us by pressing the like and subscribe button down below. You guys have been an amazing audience and we from the JPO family wishes that everyone stay safe and healthy as we continue to face this crisis together. With that, I would now be leading the prayer to end tonight's program. So please pray in whatever faith you believe in regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray that everyone in the world continues to stay strong in surviving through these difficult times and a solution to the virus will soon be found. We pray that governments across the world will continue to improve upon their efforts and decision-making so as to protect their people and curb the spread of the virus. We pray for the safety and well-being of everyone working as we now make our way halfway through May and as parts of the world continue to face new surges of cases. We pray for the continued safety and morale of the frontliners who are risking their lives so that they may continue to provide for those in need. With that, once again, um, once again, thank you, Felix, for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for, um, for watching tonight's program. Good night, and we hope to see you all again next time. See you. Yes. See you. Bye-bye. See you. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>